welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and uh, we're looking at the administration of President Muhammad Buhari. Before now, we looked about looked at the economic um, situation uh, from 2015 to now that he's living. And right now, we want to concentrate on social and legal issues of the Muhammad Buhari administration or his presidency. We're glad to have joining us two gentlemen. First of all, Sir Leonard Anyogo, legal practitioner and public affairs analyst. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Good morning and, and thank you for having me. Good morning. We also have Mr. Kola Oluwadari um, uh, representing SERAP here on the program today. Good morning and welcome. Morning. Thank you. Okay, uh, let, let me begin with uh, Sir Anyogo. Um, the legal issues of the Mohammed Buhari administration or his presidency, how would you rate it from the legal mind that you have? How would you rate his compliance to the law and everything related to the legal issues that we have had in this administration? Well, um we all know what has happened for the last eight years. Uh, you know, the unconstitutional removal of the then Chief Justice of Nigeria, uh, Justice Walter Onogen, you know, so that, that was the height of it. Uh, the rule of law was not um, obeyed during this last, this, during this outgoing administration. It was more of a national security above the rule of law. I know that in a, in a democracy, once the rule of law is um, fettered, then we have serious challenges. So uh, I, I would say that the administration was not given to the rule of law. And then basically, and most importantly, we didn't see uh, the will, the political will to, to prosecute offenders. You know, uh, raising from murderers, bandits, or so-called terrorists, Mm -hmm. And of course, you, we, we didn't see that. So you, 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 I, I may not be able to score the administration the, a, a high mark on the, um, uh, the, 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 the on rule of law. Because, you know, in, in every given society, in every given jurisdiction, once there's, um, the, once the government is not seen to be prosecuting offenders, just like I keep saying in different fora, that laws without the implementation sanctioning aspect of that law is just a mere musical instrument. We have seen where people commit all sorts of atrocities, killings, mass murderers, and there's no iota of prosecution. There's no iota of the will of government to arrest and prosecute. And so that agitates my mind because the primary duty of governance is, is, is security. So we have seen, because the government came on the premise that it was going to improve on our security situation in 2015, but I'm sorry to say that um, substantially wasn't the case, especially from the legal perspective, we didn't see that prosecution, the way to prosecute offenders. And that's why, you know, in Nigeria, basically, if you cannot, uh, you, do the, you do the crime, and you do not do the time. You do the crime, you do not do the time. So that is the challenge of the outgoing administration. I will hope that the incoming administration will take the rule of law very seriously, where people will be prosecuted for offenses that they are alleged to have committed. Okay. All right. Maybe. Okay. All right, you have a <laughs> yeah, okay, I was go ahead. To, okay, go ahead. I was trying to take it to uh, uh, Mr. Oluwadari, uh, working with Sarah. Uh, let's, let's, let's join the social part of this uh, topic to it, because social life has to do with... Uh, uh, Human, yeah, human rights and all that. And we w would like to know how you would assess uh, the present administration, that the outgoing as administration of President Mohamedou Buhari in terms of human rights uh, violations or otherwise, uh, in terms of keeping to the law as well, and in terms of uh, uh, interaction with the people of Nigeria and doing the right thing. Uh, thank you very much. Um, the administration of President Mohamed Buhari for the past six years has not fared well in the aspect of human rights. And we must understand that through the prism of what human rights are, also within the context of our constitutional position. So, Chapter 4 provides for a of the Constitution. 
and we understand the importance of the economic rights uh, to add to the economy, to human life as a well, and even to the majority of what is invested in chapter four as human rights. And these administrations have not done well. And that is not surprising, really. When we look at the other index, the key indexes of government that this government has played with, the rule of law, for instance, transparency and accountability, economy itself, and even insecurity. Government has become more opaque. The economic rights of the people are not being respected or neither are they promoted. And a very good aspect of this, which is called the institutions that this administration has formed itself, is, for instance, the report of the NDS, that's the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, which listed, which said that more than 130 million Nigerians are poor, and that is the multinational poverty index. And that is very important to know that the failure of social structures that would cushion the effect of poverty and other um, even natural things that happen, for instance, COVID 19, is basically lacking. And this is not because you do not have laws that provided for this. This is not because you do not have funds that will do this. It is because this one are just not managed. For instance, at the twilight of this administration, just two weeks ago, the president approved, uh, uh, placed before the National Assembly an approval for $800 million. And one of the things the president has said they will do this morning is some social, uh, the palliatives to push in the effect of poverty in the land as part of the, the social obligations of government. But these have been done in the past, pre and post COVID, and we've not seen either uh, an explanation of how those funds have been spent or even the effect on the people. So how are we to trust that this fund, if it is approved by the National and the funds are really borrowed from the world bank, we will not go the same way. The same for the challenge. The fact that at least two tranches of government under this administration. And Sarah had written a freedom of provision request to the, uh, to the president, asking for details of how much are coming in specifics, how they've been spent, and the benefit to the Nigerians. Of course, the matter is depending on court. And these are some of those issues that show clearly that this administration hasn't been trusted, hasn't been account accountable to the Nigerian people, and more, most importantly, the people are bearing the brunt of the, of, of the misuse of public funds under this administration. All right, let me stay with you, um, Oluwa Dari Kola, because you're of Serap, and very, first of all, I must commend Serap. Uh, you guys are doing an amazing job. Yesterday, we were talking about how we've missed Chief, uh, the late Chief Ghani Faomi, and I, I, I mentioned that Serap is doing an amazing job. In 2021, you sued the government. You had 21 lawsuits against the federal government, and part of what you sued the government about is the, how they, they, they handle the social intervention uh, program, among other things. Talk to us. How would you say that justice has been served on all the cases, the lawsuits that you've taken to court in this administration? Thank you very much. Unfortunately, the effects of the malnutrition for the past eight years is telling on the judiciary also as a key aspect of government. So the law has empowered the full judiciary to be the final arbiter of uh, the rights and obligations between citizens and between citizens and government. But unfortunately, even the judiciary is lacking the basics of the social structures and support, including logistics, to be able to do its job uh, effectively, which is why we have a lot of backlog in court. Um, out of the 21 pending cases, I can tell you, We've only had judgment for uh, two of them from that 2021 till now. And, and that shows you the slow pace of judgment, not because the judges are not working, not because they are not hard working, but basically the structures to aid their work to make it work. For instance, we're talking about judicial autonomy. And that is not only political autonomy, it also means financial autonomy for the judges to be able to do their work. The number of judges, um, the, the court infrastructure that will allow them to do that. Is simply not lacking. And much more importantly, what about the judgments that have been delivered that the executive led by the president just waste the time? How does that impact on even the, uh, the willingness of the courts to do, to, to do justice in this instance? For example, we got a judgment just two weeks ago mandating the president to give details of how the, uh, the loan corrected from the Chinese for, for building the three-stream infrastructure in Abuja as a The same thing did it that we are yet to see functioning in Abuja, and yet we've been told that we're serving those laws. The government is yet to be that judgment of court, and the judgment, and, and this administration is, is going on. So what we've seen is that while we uh, and other citizens are taking this initiative to approach the court for justice to ensure that the government is accountable, the actions of government have also made that process not that fast as it is, and it is not the process of justice in, in this regard. But we are the 
to, to, to go ahead. And we really hope that the incoming administration will obey this uh, pending judgment of court in, 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 in favor of Nigerians. Okay, let, let me go to uh, Salinad Anyogo. Um, you are of the legal profession, and I'm wondering, a lot of Nigerians wonder how come the hands of the judiciary seem to be uh, tied so much so that this administration is perceived to have gotten away with a lot of impunity. How come they just talk down on the judiciary and get their way? Because that's what a lot of people perceive this administration to have done in the, next, in the last eight years. So what tied the hands of the judiciary so that they could not perform as well as they should have performed? Well, uh, the, the straight answer to that is uh, lack of judicial uh, financial autonomy. You know, uh, I, I was in the conference, Nigerian Bar Association Conference in 2018 or 2019 or thereabouts, and the then Chief Justice of Nigeria, who is... Uh, um, uh, the then Chief Justice of Nigeria is now retired. He, he, he clearly told us that how do we expect him to be um, independent when he goes to the executive to get impress to run the, the judiciary? You know, that, that got me thinking uh, because where a man is dependent on another, <clears throat> you know, such a dependent will always take the dictates of the person, the source of, the, of his own income. You know, we will have a constitutional provision which has been signed by Mr. President. And then, what of the implementation? The judiciary does not have a financial autonomy in, in, in the real sense of it. So, that is one angle. But then, basically, um, my own jurisprudence uh, analysis of the, of the judiciary is that we have few judges, we don't have enough judges or justices uh, uh, with the full complement that can take care of so many plethora of um, cases. And some of us are even of the opinion that it's not all matter, all matter that should get to the Supreme Court. For instance, why would a rent matter eh, initiated somewhere in Zamfara or somewhere in Cross River or somewhere get to the Supreme Court? So, so we need to do some fundamental um, um, shake-up or restructuring of the judiciary too. That is my own personal opinion. Because, for instance, they, they, there's just only one Supreme Court in Nigeria. And so all cases, there's no case that is restricted. All cases get up to the Supreme Court. So I won't say that. I think the institution itself has to be restructured, um, of course, by, by, by legislation. We have to look at that so that we can get speedy administration of justice. Despite the administration of justice act that has been um, in, in existence, we still have delay in justice administration by some of those factors I've just enumerated. So I won't say that. I, I think that Nigeria as a country would do well if we allow the judicial autonomy, financial judicial autonomy. Uh, because the, when we talk about government in Nigeria, it seems to be that it's just the executive. We do not even look at uh, the legislative arm and the judicial arm. So the executive is like um, the, 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 in the, in, in, like the bully. It dictates for the other arms of government. And so why I keep saying that, look, until we have strong institutions in the country, we are going to have strong personality. Now, um, the outgoing president, Mohamed Buhari, on the 29th of May, is going to become um, a citizen. I mean, it's going to be, it's, a, it's going to be, uh, he won't have that executive powers again. And so the person that comes in and decides to use his power against him, he can use it. That is why it is good to have strong institutions, workable institutions, rather than um, uh, strong uh, individuals. So, we need to get our institution to work well. And once we get that doing, then, of course, we are going to have um, deliverables by, from this uh, judicial arm of government. Okay, Oluwadari. Oluwadari, my question to you, he just took that from my mouth. I was going to ask about the legislative arm. Because if you look at that excerpt, which we showed, the clip we showed uh, from the speech, the inaugural speech of uh, President Muhammadu Bahari in 2015, he had said that they would not interfere in the activities of the legislative arm and the judiciary. Uh, would you say that uh, here, you, there you have it. Uh, th um, this is not the excerpt I was referring to. Uh, they're going to give us that one. But he had promised that they would not interfere okay. with okay, the let me work just, let me of just, the... Let me just read this for them. 
the federal executive under my watch will not seek to encroach on the duties of oh, the, and functions of the legislative and judicial arms of government. Mm -hmm. The law enforcing authorities will be charged to operate within the constitution. We shall rebuild and reform the public service to become more effective exactly. and uh, more uh, serviceable. We shall charge them to um, apply themselves with integrity. Oluwadari. Of course, uh, what we have said and what we have done are two different things. Eight years, oh, that is not true. That is not what we think we really do. We, we cannot blame the president for having that come wrong in the past eight years. But he is the head of the executive and the head of government. So the box must stop from the government. The judiciary has to talk. The National Assembly also has a role to play in what has happened for the past eight years. But what we've seen is that the president has not set any kind of example that would be an example as the chief uh, as, as the chief executive of Nigeria for other hands of, of government to follow. For instance, when we talk about cutting weight as the presidency and the president himself, and need any example uh, in that regard. Bissara presently has a case in court where we are challenging the government, or more or less seeking an order of court to compel the president to cut some of the wasteful expenditures in the 2022 budget. And here we are in 2023. 26 billion naira was proposed as various budgeting lines for travels, means refreshment, and even for the aspects of the presidential wing of the, of the state house in Abuja in the 2022 budget. That is way too hard to justify that. And that is beyond the various amounts of money spent on presidential troops. There is simply no, 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 no political will on the part of, of the president to have laid this particular. And so if he says that he has not encroached on the duties of the legislature and the judiciary, we need to interrogate that statement clearly within the context of our experience in the past eight years. When judgments judge are given by the court, which uh, forms the basis of the judiciary, and the executive that he has refuses to obey that judgment, is that not, a, is that not an encroachment of the powers and duties of the legislature, of, of the judiciary, for instance? When the president makes this kind of presentation for National Assembly, asking for a loan of $800 million, without the justification of the deal, for what those that loan will be used for, every one of the ones who collected in the past will be used for, how can he say he's not encroaching on the duties of the powers of the members of the legislature? And when the legislature makes laws that the president flouts on the way, it's not encroaching on that function. And so we need to look at this thing within that context to determine whether the promise is made by the president in 2015 as it fulfilled or not. Presently, Sarah has more than 11 judgments of the state government. Not all of them are within the, this eight years we somewhere before then, but we have other than three within this administration that are yet to be obeyed. Uh, what does that speak about uh, the regard and the respect that the president has to the judiciary? So it is not enough to right. claim that he did not encroach. Okay. He is encroaching by his conduct and by actions in refusing to obey the law of God and okay. upholding the integrity and the strength of which is. Okay, Kola, thank you so much. I, I wish we had more time to x-ray the administration of uh, Mohammed Buhari, but he's going in a matter of days by Monday, and after that, uh, he will be ex-president. And he might not even be in Nigeria, he may be in Niger. <laughs> but, uh, well, let's see how that goes. Well, we'd like to thank you for uh, coming on the show. Sir Leonard Anyogo, um, legal practitioner and public affairs analyst, thank you so much for being a part of our program today. It's my honor. Thank you for having me. And also, Mr. Kola Oluwad Dari, uh, uh, representing Serap here on the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll take a short break. Uh, sports is next. Stay with us.